Hello. Today we are pleased to meet with the American artist Julie Wolf and uh, have her presentation in the context The Color of Light Utopian Abstractions exhibition. Uh, currently, the exhibition is displayed at Doug Gopil's Mark Rothko Art Center in Latvia uh, through August 22, 2021. And uh, in the exhibition, Julie Wolf's artwork is shown together with artists from uh, France, uh, Belgium, and United States. Julie Wolf is a multimedia artist living and working in Washington, D.C. She is best known for her emergent language of color and form and free association of the subconscious mind and perception. The artist creates drawings, prints, abstract paintings, and installations uh, using color and uh, water and light. And uh, she has participated in numerous projects uh, throughout the United States and also on, in Quito, Andorra, Berlin, Amsterdam, and, and Paris. And uh, today we are lucky to hear her presentation. So I will give word to Julie. Welcome. Hello, it's so nice to be here. Thank you, Tatiana. And I want to give my thanks to you and to Maurice and also Diane Beale, the curator of the exhibition. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about the work that I, I have in the exhibition um, and then also some of the things that I was doing that led up to uh, realizing the pieces that you have at the Mark Rothko Center. Um, so um, thank you for having me and um, I'm going to now share my screen. Uh, Um, I've, I've uh, composed a presentation for you to show images of past work and uh, present work, and then also uh, what's included in the exhibition, uh, The Color of Light, Utopian Abstractions. Uh, my work is uh, multimedia, and I'm working in a, a variety of different ways to express um, specific ideas that I'm interested in. And um, one is color and form and developing this visual vocabulary. Um, I'm also, uh, and you'll see, you'll see from what I show you today, interested in human perception and free image association and the subconscious mind. Um, and then you'll also see some large installations that, um, are about systems in the natural world, but also um, social and cultural ev evolution. Um, I'm interested in the behavior of humankind and our interaction with the natural world. So uh, first I'm gonna show you a large installation that has been shown um, several times in the US and also in Berlin. Um, it's uh, composed of water and it's lit from behind. And here's, here's one installation that was called Green Room. Um, <clears throat> it's composed of over 500 samples of water that I've gathered uh, mostly locally and domestically, but when I do it in other countries, it's gathered in usually in the surrounding areas. Um, these are samples taken from waterways that are pure and um, and also waterways that are polluted. And so at the same time, I'm gathering these samples in these jars and then taking them back to my studio and adding uh, natural color, natural pigments taken from cochineal bugs and indigo and beets and tree roots to give them this color that you see in the image. Um, but I'm also adding industrial chemicals that um, are symbolic of what's put into our waterways. Uh, this exhibition is at a museum and it's a smaller version. And, but you can also see the samples on the right that have some of the vegetation and the sediment that was gathered at the time when I was at the site. Um, it's a time-based piece and with environmental concerns, but also um, 
it shows the the process of decomposition. If you look at the samples, you start to see oxidation and changes in the vegetation and, and other elements that are in the samples. Some of these are over seven years old. Um, it's an ongoing project, so we're continuing to collect samples. Here's another view. There we go. Um, this is one of the sites where we, and just to give you an idea of how it's done, um, at this site we had uh, BBC World News available to do a story and to film. So this was where we did that. Um, here's another view of the installation. And so you start to see the overlap with the water pieces and the work that I make that's on the right. It's, it's a color study and it's, it has a very appealing sense visually, but it draws you in to learn more um, about a little bit more complicated issue. And I think it's important to show these and to introduce this installation because it, it, it definitely influenced the work that happened afterwards. You start to see um, in a two-dimensional form, the layering and the light and the gradation of color. And um, I see these samples close up as almost like tiny landscapes. Um, some are more beautiful than others, and um, but but always the color and the, the vegetation makes them more interesting. And so now I'm going to move um, to one of the pieces that's included at the Mark, Roth Mark Rothko Center. Um, it's the floor installation called Color Wheel, and um, this is installed in a museum several years ago, and it's 25. Uh, feet in diameter, it's quite large. And um, most of my work, I, I mean, I would say 75% is, is made with books, using book pages um, and, and always discarded secondhand books um, that I collect. Um, and so here I'm just showing uh, a selection of color that is representative of the color wheel. And then um, surrounding it, you can see some of my other work. Um, and here's a little bit closer view. Each one when it's installed is a little different. Uh, and I think the one that is in Latvia is done so nicely. And so here you just see a drawing that I made. This was, this was more recent. Um, just a series of drawings and many times I'm showing um, some sort of form of color theory. Um, and yeah, this is this is a piece that was made using pulling from text that was on the page. This is a series of books um, of uh, Renaissance painting. Oh, sorry. There we go. Um, okay, so here are two abstract paintings. These are rather large pieces and you can see where I'm actually using uh, book pages that are here to the canvas and then painted with color. Um, the one on the left is called Direct Daylight. So I'm trying to give the feeling of light shining onto a surface. Uh, and the one on the left is called Magnitude of Equality. And as you see in, in much of my work, there's, there's always multiple components. It's almost like a, um, like a collective or a composition um, that sh is shown in equal parts, maybe represented by different colors. And so many times I'm thinking about um, our varying thoughts, our varying, uh, perspectives and views and showing them in equal parts. And so when you have all these different components or ideas brought together, it has more strength and more impact. And so many times you'll see multiple book covers or bands of color. And I'm, I'm interested in showing a cross section, like a, a collective consciousness. 
And here is a, um, a photograph of direct daylight again, but more in a 3D form. This is a platform of large oversized antique books that I've colored with paint to symbolize uh, light shining down onto a surface. And here I have um, the, uh, the pieces that are called short stories that are included in this exhibition. Uh, each one is a, a study of color. Um, I'm, I'm basically making drawings and paintings on paper that you see to the right as a form of color study so I can see how they, the colors interact with each other before I apply them to the, the, uh, the book piece. And um, so in making these, it usually involves uh, preliminary planning and then, of course, finding the right books to make it on and, uh, and then painting the front side of the, of the books. And here you can see how um, they're constructed. On the left, it shows from behind, these are bound uh, with linen. So I'm basically deconstructing the book and then rebinding it in a different order. And then it's drilled and steel wires are run through the piece. And then on the right, you can see a few together and how they're installed. I think it's important to see the pieces from the side just to get a sense of the context. And then uh, usually when I, I start this project, I find discarded books. I think now that everything's gone digital, it's um, it, so many books are being thrown away and or given away. So I try to find those and then repurpose them. And so these are, these are cut on an old guillotine that's at a uh, studio where I work occasionally and they're cut into these slices and uh, so this is this is kind of the starting point for this project. And next I'm going to talk a little bit about this series called Venus Ozone. And again, uh, looking back to the, the large installation of the water samples, uh, the color and the landscape seen in those samples are important in this next series that's also shown two-dimensionally. Uh, I photograph uh, clouds from all over the world, from the ground and from the air. Sometimes people send them to me, but for the most part, I've gathered them um, in so many cities. And usually on the back of the piece, it will tell you where um, the images were taken. Um, and then so I, I manipulate them occasionally to get the contrast right. And I have them printed archivally on large paper. And um, when they're printed, it's usually in black and white. And but what I've shown here is on the left side, one of the the images printed um, with a color tint, and uh, and then I paint over it with with acrylic, and that's what you see on the right. The pieces are called Venus Ozone because I'm interested in an atmospheric environment, um, but also in the planet Venus and the surface and how it's ever changing. The colors are, are moving and changing all the time and you get these the beautiful array of gradations. So in a way I'm trying to mimic that, but then also when I do that, I wanna create this feeling of otherworldliness or maybe even a nostalgic memory of travel. And here's an image of um, some of the very first ones. And these are just the gradation of color before I started using the images. I'm, I'm playing with the paint and the idea of how I want to um, layer the colors onto heavy handmade paper. And next I'm gonna talk about this series. This is called Seeing Again, and it's a, it's a good example of using different components. Um, and those components in this case are images of eyes. Uh, I photographed uh, mostly self-identifying women's eyes that are creative folks like um, dancers and writers and visual artists. 
Um, these are these are people that I've met working on projects, um, usually residencies, some are acquaintances that are local, but I'm trying to um, get a, a cross section of views again um, that showing all of our different backgrounds culturally and socially and um, in our perspectives and, and showing those as individuals and doing that by the use of color. And so I, I photograph the eyes and then print them again on archival um, pigment on paper and then um, paint over them with, with the pigment to give them, to, to emphasize their individuality. And this is just one of the, the eyes that I photographed and then you can see uh, the next stage where they're painted. Um, this is at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Massachusetts and um, where I would say this project was conceived and I started working on it and adding to it. Um, and then it grew over time and influenced um, projects that came after, specifically a book called uh, Wildfires and Dream Fields. And this book is uh, fully screen printed. It's 125 pages front and back of screen printing where um, I'm using uh, dream imagery from folks that I've talked to about the dreams that they're having over the past year or two. Um, and finding that they're much more vivid and intense than they were before. And so the colors are quite intense and, um, and showing imagery that uh, a study that I've done of the kinds of things that we dream about. And here's another image of that. And last I'm gonna talk about this series. This has been a really important ongoing um, series of work that started um, back when I made the color wheel originally. And this was the, the method in which I started to develop um, a visual language using text that I find on the page intuitively. And then without thinking about it too much, I, um, I come up with a drawing that represents that word. So basically when I, when I read text or I see a word, um, I do associate it with form and color almost in a like synesthetic way. And so, um, so that's what I'm doing here. And I've continued with this. Um, many times the books are kind of like um, how-to books and books based on science or art history. Um, this was a volume of books um, that were uh, world history books, older, older um, publications, and um, using words found on the pages that seem relevant even today, and then uh, making, painting the image on, on the page. And so that's what I have for you today. And um, hopefully this will give you an idea of the work that um, influenced what you see in the museum, in the art center. And uh, so you can kind of see how these ideas evolved and then how they um, inspired work and in after, after um, the art was made for this exhibition. Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. It's, uh, very interesting. And uh, we are pleased to have your artwork featured uh, in the international project, The Color of Light. And uh, we still welcome visitors uh, to see it for the next couple of weeks. Good. And uh, maybe some questions. How do you feel? Um, how do I feel? I, you know, I, um... When I talk about my work, I'm so excited about it and I understand it deeply, um, but I always struggle with putting it into words so that it's everyone can understand, <laughs> you know, so I hope that that I was successful in that. I know it was very interesting to see that you are working in so different forms and ways and really experimenting a lot but still everything uh, is portraying a very clear idea behind it. 
and uh, it was uh, fascinating to hear the stories behind the series that we can show in the exhibition. And uh, maybe you could uh, tell a little bit more about uh, how were the pieces and uh, the series exhibited in the Rothko Center that we are now picked up, like how did you come up with uh, concretely this artwork that it should be the part of Color of Light project? Um, well, I mean, that's a very broad question. I think that each piece, I, I, even though they're all different mediums, have um, consistency and, um, you know, obviously come together to speak of, of the idea of color and light. So, um, you know, specifically the Venus pieces, I think, are... Um, representational of all my work um, because it's using uh, photographic images and color and then almost like an illusion of light. Um, the color wheel is um, symbolic of simply the use of color and what what my what I'm pulling from in, in much of my work. And, um, and so the book series, which is the short stories, wall sculptures, those represent the element of how to layer colors and combine them, but also um, my use of, of found books in much of my work. And then taking those found books, um, and this is true as well with the color wheel, taking these books and putting them into a different form so that they can be repurposed to convey um, an important idea. Definitely. And uh, I really liked uh, these uh, photographs of eyes. And uh, it's also very interesting, like uh, uh, how many people have you photographed and, and how big actually uh, this series could be? Like I understand there are different variations of how it can be installed. It's so true. And it, it's been installed in different ways. I think the most effective is when it is in a grid pattern, like you have it installed. Um, I would say I photographed 50, maybe close to 50 different eyes. And, um, but usually the, the uh, piece is around 40 uh it pieces and but you know there's in, in my mind there's no set way that it has to look i think that it's important just to show um the variety of eyes and to show them together as one so that each eye activates the next and um the the creative people that i'm photographing are incredibly talented and so they're they're artists that i i value their opinion and have a great deal of respect for and so it's it's a very like loving sort of endearing uh project to me and um and so that's why i continue to show it which i'm excited to do and um, and then also to use it um, in in other work since I since I started the, the study of eyes the seeing again project, and um, and we'll continue to use um, the eye as a way to show identity and multiple perspectives and uh, personality. Thank you very much. Very much. It was incredible to have your presentation even though you cannot, cannot uh, arrive uh, to Latvia to participate in the exhibition event program. We, we are very, very lucky to have you here and uh, talk about uh, your artwork in general and also about the artwork that is currently on display here in Latvia in Markotko Art Center. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tatiana, and thank you for having me and for, for showing my work as part of this exhibition. It's an honor and a privilege and I hope to stay in touch and um, please pass my um, gratitude to the, the folks that installed the work and worked behind the scenes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.